Yeah, I don't want to get too deep into the medical part of it. Uh, we certainly feel like we, we have our arms around what it is, and he started uh, medication, and we feel like he's responded well to that. Uh, you know, I've spoken to him. His teammates have spoken to him. He seems in really good spirits. He seems in a good place. We'll just have to wait and see how it all goes. And uh, first and foremost, we're thinking about him and his family uh, as, as people uh, more than any football aspect of this. And we'll just see how, how he comes back from this. Uh, he's handled it really well up to this point. And again, I think he's in a good uh, mental frame of mind. Uh, in regards to w what happens with us, you know, Joe Looney's taken a lot of snaps in his absence up to this point. Uh, we signed a center the other day. Uh, uh, we have some other options that, that, we can, that we can look towards as we go forward. But uh, for now, Joe Looney's taken those snaps with the ones. And uh, again, he's handled that work uh, really well up to this point. Talked about uh, Zach Martin's versatility really throughout his career, you know, his ability to uh, play tackle. Uh, you know, that's what he played in college. And then his ability to snap the ball, he's worked on that in, in the past. Uh, we do anticipate him being our right guard. Uh, but that's somebody in-house that you could, you could talk about. Uh, as a safety net as we go forward. And then certainly, uh, you know, you're always seeing what the landscape is out there, not on your team right now, of people who could be available to help us. But uh, again, that's all getting way, way ahead of ourselves. Uh, the biggest thing for us is to take each day with, with Travis, be there to support him and the guys who are available to us now are going to get some opportunities. So he's, he's two days into this treatment. And again, he's responded well to it. So we'll just wait and see how he continues to respond. We don't have to make those decisions for a couple more weeks. Uh, obviously, he's a huge part of our team, and uh, you know he's worth a any roster spot when it comes down to it, because uh, of what he's what he's done, and hopefully what he's going to be able to continue to do for us. But we'll just wait to see how he does and make those decisions when we need to. Hello, friends. Welcome into the Cowboys Report presented by Bet DSI, the internet's number one sports book. We'll start things off, as Jason Garrett did, with some updates on Travis Frederick and his health. For starters, we now know what has been causing the shoulder stingers he has been dealing with. It is Gia Barre syndrome. We'll call it GBS for short because it's not pronounced anything like how it's spelled. Frederick is currently undergoing treatment for GBS. So here's some more information on what this actually is. It is a rare autoimmune disease that attacks the body's nerves and affects only one in a hundred thousand people. Now recovery, depending on when the disease is caught, can take anywhere from weeks to years. The good news for Frederick and the Cowboys and everyone involved is that it seems the Cowboys and Frederick did catch this early on in the process. While there is no cure for GBS, treatment can eliminate the issue for the most part and it should allow Frederick to live a healthy and normal life once he's fully cleared from the disease, even though there will not be a cure for him. Now, it is a big impact for the Dallas Cowboys, but as I'm sure you all understand, that's not really the main priority here for the Cowboys and for Frederick. The number one priority is that his long-term health will be fine. They caught this disease early. That is a very good sign for Frederick. And in reality, this disease can cause paralysis, and that shouldn't be the case here for Frederick. He should be fine long-term. But the reality is, is this is the NFL, and of course, I'm sure many of you want to know what this means for Frederick and the Cowboys this year. Yes, they caught the disease early. There is still no timetable for when Frederick will be able to return to the Dallas Cowboys. Don't expect him to play in week one this season. That'd be a rapidly fast turnaround. And there's a real chance that Frederick doesn't play at all this season for the Cowboys because of GBS. The good news is long term, he'll be fine. The bad news is, of course, he's dealing with some pain right now. And the Cowboys are likely to be without their all pro and frankly, best center in the entire NFL. Folks, today's show is brought to you by BetDSI. Head to chatsports.com slash bet for an exclusive offer, a 120% deposit bonus using promo code COWBOYS120. You put down 100 bucks, you'll end up with 220 to bet on at chatsports.com slash bet. As for how the Frederick uh, GBS syndrome affects him this year and the Cowboys this year, well, Joe Looney is your next man up at center. Now, the Cowboys, if they really wanted to, could consider moving Zach Martin to to, to center. He is the emergency center there. Lael Collins could go play right guard and Cam Fleming could go play uh, right tackle. And then maybe that becomes your five best for the time being. But that is not the Cowboys' current plan. The plan right now is to make Joe Looney your starting center for, of course, week three of the preseason and likely beyond that as well until week one of the regular season and as far you know, as the Cowboys need to go while they wait for Frederick to return. Now, he has been a bit of the class clown for the Cowboys, as you see right there, pretending to be a heavier Zeke Elliott. 
He's an okay player. He's certainly not a caliber of Travis Frederick. But let me know, should Joe Looney start at center? Type Y for yes and for no. The reality is there's really not a better option out there. You can take a look at some potential additions here for the Cowboys. You could bring in a free agent like a Zane Beatles or a Max Turk who have had their issues. Turk was a former third-round pick and quickly flamed out of the NFL. Beatles, so well, there's a reason the veteran has not been signed yet. You could also look for a trade as well. Maybe it's Brian Schwenke of the Patriots, a Travis Swanson of the Jets, a former relatively high draft pick. John Tooth could have been a high pick had he not been hurt right before the NFL draft. Those three players there, Brian, Travis, and John, all make some sense in the sense that those teams have other options at center and they might not make the roster. Thus, they could be waiver wire additions or even potentially trade targets, although I don't know if the Eagles are actually going to trade for or trade a player to the Dallas Cowboys at this point. So that's the update there for you on Travis Frederick. We'll keep you updated as things develop, but don't expect him to be good to go early in the season. This syndrome will take time to recover from. The good news is his long-term health is going to be okay. Folks, do you want to win this Ezekiel Elliott jersey? Well, we're going to tell you how you can win it, and we'll give it away on Tuesday's show. So stay tuned for that coming up in just a little bit. In the meantime, we'll take you now to the latest Cowboys rumors presented by BetDSI. First up, could the Cowboys trade for another safety? And they've already added two guys in Jerron Johnson. They also went ahead and brought in Dominique Sanders. But I'll give this one three stars. And it's they're going to add somebody I would hope and think before the end of the or excuse me, before the start of the actual regular season. The Cowboys are precariously thin right now after Xavier Woods' injury. And Steven Jones has said, of course, what else was he going to say? But he said he's open to adding another safety or two to help improve the Cowboys roster and depth. And we've seen it many a time before. Last year, they, they traded for a quarterback and a DT before the start of the, of the regular season. I would not be surprised. In fact, I expect it to happen. So you see the Cowboys go trade for somebody near the bottom of another team's depth chart who can at least be a better number three for week one than Cam Kelly or Tyree Robinson. So, folks, there's the safety depth chart. The safety depth chart, excuse me. Do the Cowboys need to add another one? Type one for yes, two for no. I am not remotely satisfied with Jerron Johnson or Dominique Sanders. Yeah, they can help you out for the preseason, but you don't want those guys out there in week one of the regular season. I'm typing in yes. I don't know which player it'll be, but you got to add somebody for week one because you cannot get by with Jeff Heath, Kevon Frazier, and a bunch of undrafted guys or you know camp bodies out there on the roster. Folks, today's clothing is presented by Mizzen and Man. Go to comfortable.af to get your own awesome shirt. It is the most comfortable shirt you will ever own. Check them out at comfortable.af because they are comfortable as F. We'll stick on defense now for the rumors. Is Randy Gregory going to start for the Cowboys? I'll bump this one up to three stars. I won't get caught up in the minutia of what starting really means. In terms of his snap count, I kind of think Gregory's going to get pretty close to starting snaps for the Cowboys. Now, Gregory is getting a lot of first team work at right defensive end with Tyrone Crawford kicking in inside back to DT, as I know many of you wanted on the, sh as I've seen the comment section on the show before. What I think you'll likely see happen is you're not going to see the first down starting unit be Crawford at DT and Gregory Nickel because that's going to open you up to way too many problems at or against the run. But I think on passing downs, as you saw against the Bengals, Tyrone Crawford slides into DT where it's not as important to be able to hold up against the run. And then Randy Gregory lines up at defensive end. And all of a sudden, with Demarcus Lawrence, Crawford, Gregory, and then we'll throw out Malik Collins slash David Irving once the regular season actually starts, that's a really good pass rushing foursome up front. So, folks, let me know, should Randy Gregory start for the Cowboys? I want him on the field in passing downs. But on first down, let's put in a big guy like an Antoine Woods in there or Malik Collins to keep those DTs in there and have Crawford set the edge at right defensive end. Don't put her on the field yet in the running situations. All right, next up, could the Cowboys trade for Odell Beckham? If you follow me on Twitter at WhatGoingDowny, you already know the answer to this one. It is undoubtedly fake news, and this is probably one of the biggest fake newses I've seen in quite some time. So... Something called Metro US published an article that was on the front page of Google this morning that claimed an Odo Beckham trade was in imminent and the Cowboys were in the mix. Folks, this is the fakest news in the history of fake news, maybe ever. There is a 0% chance this happens. For starters, the Giants are on the verge of getting a deal done with Odo Beckham. They've already had contract talks. Two, 
they're sure as hell not going to trade Odell Beckham to their rivals, the Dallas Cowboys. This is absolutely fake news. Shame on you, whatever you are, Metro US, for your unbelievably inaccurate report. All right, number four on our rumors roundup. Could the Cowboys keep Mike White? This used to be three stars, but I'm going to knock it down to two because I'm not so sure that is actually what the Dallas Cowboys will do at quarterback. Their initial plan was that they wanted to keep Dak Prescott, Cooper Rush, and Mike White. But Mike White hasn't played all that well. Maybe he could actually sneak onto the practice squad and the Cowboys can stash him there, even though that would be a risk. Now, the Cowboys in reality, because of the injuries to Xavier Woods, to Zach Martin, and to Travis Frederick, they're going to need to carry extra bodies at offensive line and at safety. They're going to need to carry an extra safety because they're not going to put Xavier Woods on IR, and I don't know what they'll do with Frederick yet either. That costs you, in reality, two extra roster spots. Mike White might be one of those guys who gets cut. Now, I think you're going to go one less at receiver as well, so take a pick between Lance Lenore and Danny Thompson at this point. But those injuries, I think, might force the Cowboys to go with only two quarterbacks, thus Mike White, who's been average at best behind a bad offensive line in the preseason, might be the odd man out. All right, how many touchdowns will Dak Prescott throw for this year? Will it be less than 23? Well, that's what the over-under is. Oh, over under says from our friends over at Bet DSI. I'll give this one three stars. That sounds about right to me, even though it's not a big number. But remember, Dak Prescott threw for 22 last year and threw for 23 in his rookie season. Well, that kind of sounds about right to me for what the over under should be. So expect Dak Prescott to finish with roughly 23 touchdown passes this year. It's exactly in line with what he's done in the past. And by the way, when the Cowboys get in the red zone this season, Guess who's going to get the football? It's going to be Zeke Elliott on the ground, not so much through the passing game with one Dak Prescott. So, folks, let me know over under passing touchdowns this year for Dak Prescott. If you think it's going to be over 22.5, type in O. If it's under, type in U for 22.5 there. As for myself, I do think it'll be around the 22-23 mark. I probably won't place a bet on this one for me. I just don't feel overly confident in it. But they are right in line with what Dak has done in the past. You look at his numbers, 2017-2016. Yeah, the yards and completion percentage went down, the interceptions went up, but the touchdowns remained pretty steady. I think you'll roughly see Dak Prescott finish with about 23 touchdowns this year. Folks, I am giving away a Zeke Elliott jersey with the help of my friends over at BetDSI, the Internet's number one sports book. They support this show so much so that they are giving you an exclusive offer. Head to chatsports.com bet and use promo code COWBOYS120 for a 120% deposit bonus. What that means is you put down 100 bucks, you'll end up with $220 to bet with on BetDSI. We'll tell you more about this jersey giveaway here in just a second, but you got to head to chatsports.com slash bet and use promo code COWBOYS120 to enter. Another over-under from our friends over at BetDSI. Is Zeke Elliott not going to reach 1,400 yards? The BetDSI over-under is 1,375 and a half. I give this just one star. This is a great bet. I've already put my money down at chatsports.com slash bet. You should do the same. You can use promo code COWBOYS120 to get an extra 120% deposit bonus. This is a no-brainer bet for me as long as Zeke plays all 16 games. Look at what he did in 2016. 1,631. Last year, in only 10 games, he ran for 983. If Zeke plays all 16 games, he is going to put up about 100 yards per game. That makes it an easy over for me. I'm typing in three in the comment section. Zeke's going to approach closer to 1,600 if he's healthy, of course, than 1,375. I'm typing the over here. Again, if you agree with me, prove it. Go to chatsports.com slash bet and promo code COWBOYS120 for a 120% deposit bonus. They're going to give you free money. Go use it to get more by picking Zeke to have over 1,400 yards this year. One last rumor for you guys, and it's not really a good one. Lael Collins is currently banged up at practice today, had his left ankle heavily taped, and was limping around at practice. Now, Collins had Chaz Green go in his place, which I know you guys love to see happen, and I agree with you that it's a disaster there. The Cowboys' offensive line has been hit very, very hard by injuries, and 
You can take a look now at what this depth chart looks like at today's practice because Tyron Smith also didn't go as he got his veteran rest day. So this was your starting unit today. Cam Fleming, Connor Williams, Joe Looney, Kadeem Edwards, Chaz Green. Oh my God, this is a disaster. This is why depth matters. Now Smith will be fine. Don't panic about him not being on there. Sewell needs to keep developing. We'll talk more about him in a little bit. Looney is now your starting center, but with Zach Martin banged, out, or banged up, Kadeem Edwards is your right guard. And yes, Chaz Green is a disaster, but I don't think you want Corn Curvin or Jake Campos out there either. Chaz Green isn't very good, but Campos and Curvin, especially Curvin, are even worse. So hopefully Leo Collins is okay because the Cowboys cannot afford to lose yet another starter on that right side, at least potentially for week one. We'll keep you updated on, on Leo Collins as we know more. All right, folks, once again, I am Tom Downey. Go ahead and follow me on Twitter at WhatGoingDowney for more Cowboys coverage as you're watching the Cowboys Report presented by BetDSI, the Internet's number one sportsbook. Take a look now to the NFL Week 3 preseason matchup, Cowboys and the Cardinals. The Cowboys are home in this one, but the Cardinals are actually favorites on BetDSI. And by the way, pick the Cardinals. I know you don't like me picking against the Cowboys. Dallas is not going to play many of their starters. The Cardinals are probably going to, plus they have better quarterback depth overall. Give me the Cardinals by one point. I know it's a road. I know it's against the Cowboys. I think that's pretty close to free money there at chatsports.com slash bet. All right, folks, do you want to win that Zeke Elliott jersey? We need five people to sign up with BetDSI at chatsports.com slash bet and deposit using promo code COWBOYS120. If we get five people to sign up, we will have one lucky winner of those signups and we'll announce it on Tuesday's show and you'll get this jersey free delivered right to your house. You're already betting on football, so why not get some free money and a Zeke Elliott jersey, head to chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code is Cowboys120, and they'll give you a 120% deposit bonus, courtesy of BetDSI. All right, so with the Cowboys playing the Cardinals on Sunday, they look at five players to watch in this one, and yeah, Rico Gathers ranks up there because of course he does. You might see him get some work with the first team if he does, that does mean there's at least a chance he makes the roster. Unfortunately for Rico and the Rico Hive out there, he's running out of time to make this roster to prove he can make it. Now, I know what you're thinking. He can do all those great upside in terms of the passing game, which he does. He's shown the flashes there. He's also shown some poor blocking and some issues knowing what the proper play is and knowing the just the, the nuances of playing football, which Jason Garrett and Jerry Jones have said themselves. So, low folks, let me know if you think Rico will make the roster. If I was in charge... Well, the injuries have given me pause, but I would try and find a way to make to put Rico Gathers on this roster. But I also know that the Cowboys probably aren't going to put Rico. In reality, I think they'll only carry three tight ends. The injuries that safety and offensive line, by the way, have made that a little bit more likely. And the three guys right now ahead of Rico Gathers, at least from the Cowboys' perspective, by a pretty significant margin, are Jeff Swain, Blake Jarwin, and Dalton Schultz. The staff trusts all three of those guys more than Rico Gathers. Yes, Rico brings you that upside in the passing game, but the staff just doesn't fully trust him yet. He could be traded, he could be cut, and if he does get cut, I don't think Rico and the Cowboys will have a mutual interest in putting him on the practice squad either. So week three, week four might be the last time we see Rico gathers in a Cowboys uniform. If you guys aren't sports bettors, well, don't worry. We can still hook you up with that Ezekiel Elliott jersey. Here's what you got to do. Go to chatsports.com slash Zeke and use promo code free ship for free shipping. It'll take you to the Fanatic sites and we'll get you the Zeke Elliott jersey. Of course, you have to pay for it if you want to win it for free. Or go to chatsports.com slash bet and you can win it there. But that is how you get that Zeke Elliott jersey here. Again, that's chatsports.com slash Zeke. Promo code free ship for free shipping. Some more players to watch now on the Dallas Cowboys. Joe Looney, also kind of a duh, because he is now your starting center until Travis Frederick is able to return to the field. We don't know when that is going to be, so the Cowboys need to give Joe Looney some reps and get him some confidence going, see him play well. Looney is a fine backup as far as I'm concerned. Now, he's not an elite player by any means, and frankly, look, I put Travis Frederick as the most valuable guy on this team not that long ago. I am concerned here about the, the injury to, to Frederick and how long he'll be out with that health condition. Looney he needs to show, some, show himself that he can do it and show the Cowboys he can do it there. Only 94 snaps last year, 
but he is the team's top backup interior lineman. All right, next up is Connor Williams. Some more offensive line notes here. I don't know if we'll see Tyron Smith. I don't know if we'll see Leo Collins. So we could have the only projected starter from the beginning of the year that starts is Connor Williams. Now, he has struggled at times this year with some strength. He's been pretty good when moving, but the knock on him coming out of Texas was he's not the strongest guy. So no surprise then. He's not the strongest guy right now. Now, I'm not overly concerned about Sewell. It's going to take some time. But I am a little bit more worried that there is no Frederick because the initial plan for the Cowboys was, look, we can have Tyron and Frederick kind of help out Sewell as needed. You can't help him out now because Tyron's got to be on his island. Sewell and Joe Looney are now playing next to each other. You want to help both those guys, can't help them all. So that's the fear there for me with the Cowboys and how they fit together with Sewell. I think Connor Williams will be fine, but I'm going to watch how he plays against the Cardinals defensive line that he should be able to handle. Folks, today's clothing was provided by Mizzen and Mang. Go to comfortable.af today. Get your own awesome shirt. They're made in America, and they are the most comfortable thing you will ever own. The defense now and the players to watch. First up is Randy Gregory now. He might get more work against the Cardinals in terms of an overall snap count. He played almost the entire first half because the Cowboys defense just shut down the Bengals last week. Now, Gregory has started in the nickel sets next to Tyrone Crawford. What I want to see is when the Cowboys come out on first down, their first defensive snap of the game, is Randy Gregory at right defensive end and Crawford's at DT? Or is it what I think it'll be? Crawford at DT, Gregory, or excuse me, Crawford at DE, and then Gregory comes in and passing downs. I would prefer the latter there. But you're going to see this quite a bit this year in the preseason and during the regular season. This nickel package, if and when Lee Collins comes back fully healthy. Tank, Collins, Crawford, Gregory, good luck stopping that. All four of those guys have shown the ability to get to the passer. And Collins and Crawford will get will get man-to-man -man matchups on, on the offensive line. They could have some real success there. So I want to see how Gregory fares. And by the way, how many sacks will Randy Gregory have this season? Let me know in the comment section. The hype train continues to grow. I'll keep it more around the five, four and a half mark because I just want to see Gregory get a, a second career sack. He only has one so far in his NFL career. One more player to watch. That is Tyree Robinson. The injury to Xavier Woods gives Robinson a chance to make the roster as the number two free safety. Now, as of right now, Jeff Heath will start there, but Robinson is the next man up because Kevon Frazier is a box safety. I need to see Robinson prove that he's more than just an undrafted free agent that some people like that could be a practice squad guy. That's where he is right now. I need to see Robinson make some plays and at the very least not be a liability. And the reality is that when you go undrafted in the NFL, the initial thought is that you're going to be a liability as a rookie. There are very few exceptions to that rule. So I need to see Robinson make more plays. If he does that, I'll feel a little bit better about the Cowboys' depth chart. But overall, the DBs have not done very well in the preseason. Robinson is included in that mix. All right, folks, let me know your score predictions for Cowboys versus Cardinals. As I said earlier, I've already put my money down on BetDSI at chatsports.com slash bet for the Cardinals to win this game. Look, the Cowboys are not going to try to win. Arizona will. In the end, Arizona will end up winning.